Raptor Pack by Dr. Robert T. Baker. Introduction. My name is Bob Baker and I'm a paleontologist. My job is to dig up fossil bones and figure out how dinosaurs lived. I think it's the best job in the world. I'm going to tell you a story about a pack of raptors and then I'm going to tell you how we figured out that that story is mostly true. Chapter 1. Imagine a summer morning 120 million years ago in what is now Montana. Huge scaly monsters move in herds over a dry lake bed. They're dinosaurs, three kinds of giant plant eaters. The sound of leaves being munched fills the air. There's an undercurrent of grunts and snorts and wheezes and hisses. Giant veggie sars bump into each other as they compete for the juiciest green morsels. Each herbivore's tummy emits rumbling sounds, the noise of contented digestion. There's a smell of crushed fruit. The land is flat and low and dry. It's hot all year round. The trees are mostly evergreens with thick green needles. The only plants with flowers are some small shrubs. The dinosaur herds kick up clouds of red dust as they walk along. Towering over everybody else are a dozen gigantic brachiosaurs. They're long-necked dinosaurs who reach 40 feet up to feed on the tops of trees. You see a family of ankylosaurs. These armor-plated dinosaurs are as big as elephants with spikes on their shoulders. They are munching on plants low to the ground. Beyond the lake bed is a river bank where trees grow close together. There you see dozens and dozens of moose-sized plant eaters. They have square heads and really long tails. These are tenontosaurs, and they're the favorite prey of dinosaurs called raptors. Suddenly, the brachiosaurs and ankylosaurs stop eating. They smell something in the wind, something that scares them. A brachiosaur points its nose toward the trees. It snorts so loud that the tree trunks shake. Leaves fall to the ground. The ankylosaurs hiss and grumble and stomp their feet. They're angry, too. They hate that smell. But the long-tailed tenontosaurs can't smell any danger. Their nostrils are stuffed up with dust and dirt, and the wind is blowing in the wrong direction. But one old tenontosaur sees two shapes stepping quickly through the trees. Two other shapes move slowly in the tall ferns on the other side of the herd. The old plant eater has many memories of shapes like these. Bad memories. He screams. Ten other tenontosaurs start to scream too. All the vegisaur brains switch to stampede mode. The whole herd starts running. The oldest members kick and bump into each other. The youngsters try to keep out of the way. It's dangerous to be in the middle of a dino stampede. Hidden in the trees and ferns, four raptors watch the scene with great care. That's because they too have memories. They remember how big, healthy tenontosaurs are dangerous and defend themselves with sharp beaks and claws. All four raptors have scars on their faces and legs from attacks they've made in the last two years. But one tenontosaur catches the raptor's attention. It's limping. The raptors rush in from both sides, dodging the snapping beaks of the healthy plant eaters. They leap up to see their target. One raptor jumps up and swings its back feet at the tenontosaur. The raptor's sharp hind claws cut deep into its thigh. The tenontosaur trips and falls. In seconds, all four raptors stand on its belly. After the kill, the raptors pant hard. Once they, they catch their breath, they make a drumming sound inside their chests. It's a signal. It means, come and get it. Seven little raptor chicks the size of chickens scamper out of their hiding places. The air is full of gulping and swallowing and grunting noises. An hour later, the raptors have tummies stuffed full of meat. They lick dried blood and flesh from the feathery scales that cover their bodies. 
By noon, the sun is blazing. They look for a way to escape the hot ground. A tall, thick tree stands nearby. They go to it. The adult raptors reach up with their long arms and begin to climb. Using the hooked claws on their hands and feet, they pull themselves into the lower branches. The chicks zip up the tree in seconds. Within minutes, the whole pack is asleep. Snores and belches come from the tree all night. Just before dawn, a dark mass sneaks around the tree trunk. It's an acrocanthosaur, a giant predator or meat eater. He has jaws so big he can swallow a raptor whole, and he'd like to, too. The big guy hisses and looks up into the trees. He thumps the bark with his snout. Bleak! One raptor chick upchucks a mouthful of toe bone. The big predator gets a hit on the head. Bleak! 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 One good upchuck leads to another. All the chicks hurl bone bits at the predator below. The 5,000 pound meat eater growls, but can't climb. He can't get at the pack. He snorts one last time and walks away. Chapter two. So how do scientists know that raptors really did things like this? We know because we've dug up their bones and the bones of their prey. We've mapped the places where they live, locating the mountains, lakes, and rivers. We found the fossilized roots of plants that grew back then so we can figure out what the landscape looked like. And we can look at living predators such as leopards and hyenas to see how they lived their lives. Hundreds of scientists have helped us understand the raptors. Plus, we have volunteers who help us dig all these discoveries were used to bring raptors back to life in the Jurassic Park movies. The first fossil raptor pack was dug in 1964 near Bridger, Montana. I was there as part of the team that dug the bones for Yale professor John H. Ostrom. We knew we were digging up some kind of new dinosaur. The claws were weird, much sharper than any we'd seen before. Ordinary dino predators had hand claws shaped like an eagle's. They were thick and rounded on the bottom. They work like a meat hook. Meat hook claws are good for grabbing prey and holding on, but this new dinosaur had hand claw bones that were narrow and super sharp on the bottom. They were more like a curved knife than a hook. Professor Ostrom gave this bizarre new dinosaur the name Deinonychus, or terrible claw. It was a member of the famous raptor family and a very close relative of Velociraptor dug in Man Mongolia. All raptors are built a lot like birds. Specimens dug from special lake beds in China show that their bodies had a complete coat of down-like feathers. In our Montana dig, bones from four raptors were all mixed up together. My first job as a student paleontologist was to sit in the lab and sort out what knee went with what shin. Then I drew a picture of what Dionychus looked like when it was alive. Next, we wanted to figure out how this body worked. Chapter three. The first puzzling thing about Dionychus it was its size. It was a lightweight. Most famous dino predators were big guys. T-Rex, the giant meat-eater who lived after Deinonychus, grew to weigh 12,000 pounds. But even a big adult Deinonychus would only weigh about 150 pounds. Small size didn't make sense. Meat-eaters eat plant-eaters or veggie sores as I call them. Today about 150 pound meat-eaters kill prey about the same size as they are. But in the layer of rock where we dug Deinonychus, we found veggie sores weighing up to 100,000 pounds. We found hardly any veggie sores as small as 500 pounds. There were some turtles and rare turkey-sized dinosaurs, but not enough to feed a raptor. So it looked like Deinonychus had to kill things much bigger than itself. But how? It couldn't kill big things by biting them. Deinonychus had sharp curved teeth with saw edges, but they were tiny teeth. They were good for cutting meat off a dead body, 
but not big enough to kill a large dinosaur. And its skull bones were too thin to deliver a hard bite. So how did Deinonychus take down big prey? The puzzle was finally solved when we realized that Deinonychus was a kickboxer. We were looking at the wrong end of the raptor. The killing apparatus was in the rear. The strongest parts of its body were its hind legs. Marks on the bone showed us where the leg muscles attached and the muscles for kicking backward were especially strong, 10 times more powerful than the jaw muscles. Deinonychus could kick backward much, much harder than it could bite. If it had a deadly weapon on its hind foot, Deinonychus would be very dangerous. Guess what? That's exactly what Deinonychus had. Its most deadly weapons were its hind claws. There was one fighting claw on each foot, shaped like the hand claws, only bigger. A Deinonychus's hind leg would slice open a veggie sore in one stroke. If Deinonychus was a kickboxer, then it should have been built for jumping and dodging. Ostrom showed that it was. The raptor was so light and its hind legs so strong, it could jump higher than a basketball player and it could turn in midair. Deinonychus had a two-part tail. The part near the body had muscles and joints for quick movement, but the rear part was long and light with hardly any muscle at all. It was like the long pole acrobats used to balance on a high wire. All around the rear tail bones were bony rods as thin as fishing line. These lines were connected to the muscles. When the tail muscles pulled, the rear tail could flip around so the raptor could turn in midair. There's nothing alive today with a quick flip tail like raptors. Chapter 4 Deinonychus had to do more than kill prey. It had to survive in a tough environment. Dying from thirst was a real threat. The only big fish fossils we find near our raptors are from lungfish, and lungfish today survive by breathing air when rivers dry up completely. In the rocks where we dug these raptors, we also found fossil lake beds. These lake beds had minerals in them that only grow in salt lakes. Salt lakes form when summers are so hot and dry that a lot of water evaporates into the air. This makes the water left behind too salty to drink. Deinonychus could get water from the blood of its prey, but how could the raptors escape the heat? On dry lake beds in modern Africa, leopards climb up into trees to get away from the searing heat at ground level and to enjoy cool breezes. Could Deinonychus climb? Most meat-eating dinosaurs couldn't. Their arms weren't long enough. Famous predators like Tyrannosaurus rex and Allosaurus had arms so short that their fingers couldn't reach their ears. Raptors, though, were very different. Deinonychus had very long arms and fingers. Its shoulder joints were different, too. In normal meat-eaters like T. rex and Allosaurus, the shoulder joint was tight and wouldn't let the arm move up much. But raptors had a much looser shoulder joint. They could spread their arms sideways to grab. Deinonychus was able to reach out and pull itself up into a tree with its fingers and toes, and it was strong enough to haul up prey parts, too. Climbing can be a lifesaver for another reason, to avoid bigger predators. In the same area where we dug our raptor pack, we found the bones of a rare giant predator called an acrocanthosaur. It was 20 times heavier than Deinonychus. This guy could easily steal a raptor's kill from off the ground and gobble up a few raptors while he was at it. Deinonychus could use the curved claws on its hands and feet to get into the trees and out of danger. One Deinonychus hunting by itself was a dangerous predator. Still, it could find itself in serious trouble. Fossil footprints show us that most veggie sores traveled in big herds. Herd animals can counterattack. Today, water buffalo herds will sometimes stomp an attacking tiger to death, but lions are group hunters, and four lions attacking together can bring down a water buffalo. Did Dionychus hunt in packs? Fossil footprints would tell us, 
but we haven't found any raptor footprints yet. We do have another clue, however. When we dug our first Dionicus bones in 1964, we found three or four adult skeletons in one small spot. They had been buried by a flood. They could have drowned, or they could have died of disease just before the flood. But one thing was certain, these meat eaters were together before they died. But why? Chapter five. Predators don't usually hang out in groups if they don't hunt together. Tigers are like this. They mostly hunt alone and you don't see bunches of tigers lying around together. But lions are social predators. They hunt and raise their young and sleep and snore together. Those three or four adult Deinonychus we dug were probably a pack, a group from one species who hunted together. So, what was the pack hunting? Scientists can figure that out by using what I call dinosaur crime scene investigation. It's a new technique that lets us go back in time and follow dinosaurian meat eaters. Just as detectives look at bullets found at crime scenes to identify the gun that shot them, we look for dinosaur bullets among the fossilized remains of prey animals to identify the predators that chewed on them. These dino bullets are teeth that predators lost while feeding on prey. Losing teeth didn't hurt the dinosaurs. New teeth grew in their jaws as long as they lived. Humans grow two sets of teeth, baby teeth and adult teeth. If you break an adult tooth, you won't grow a new one. But raptors never run out of teeth. When one fell out, another was there to replace it. Sharks and crocodiles grow teeth this way, and so do most lizards. If you x-ray the jaws of a meat-eating dinosaur, you'll see a few teeth stacked on top of each other in each tooth socket. New teeth start growing at the bottom of the stack, and the whole stack is always moving up. Before the top tooth fell out, chemicals in the dinosaur's body dissolved the root, the part that held it inside the socket. Usually, the top tooth fell out when the animal was eating, so a tooth without a root is a dino bullet that was lost during the crime of eating. Police detectives study bullets under the microscope to identify the guns that shot them. The size of the bullet, the marks on its size, and the sharpness of the point are all clues. Dinosaur teeth give clues too, if you look carefully. When we put tooth bullets under the scope, we can tell what kind of dinosaur fired them. Raptor teeth are sharp with a coarse saw edge on the rear. Other kinds of meat eaters have thicker and blunter teeth, better for crushing. Dinosaur detectives have to be careful when they find a fossil tooth that has its root attached. That's not a bullet. It's part of a dinosaur who was killed by predators or drought or disease. Roots hold a tooth tightly in the socket. A dinosaur had to die and rot before a tooth with its root in place could fall out. Crocodiles alive today leave tooth bullets at crime scenes like dinosaurs did. Sometimes in Australia, a saltwater croc will attack a surfer. Afterward, you can find a rootless croc teeth stuck in the surfboard, sometimes in the surfer too. We wanted to find spots where raptors fed and left their tooth bullets. Plus, we wanted to find spots where they didn't feed. A big meat eater has the toughest job in nature. Why? Your lunch can fight back. Big, strong vegetarians will charge as soon as they catch a meat eater's scent. And some herbivores have special anti-predator weapons. Rhinos today use their horns to spear lions and giant armadillos have armor so tough that jaguars can't bite through it. Where did we find Dionychus bullets? Modern hyenas try to avoid elephants and hippos, so we figured Dionychus would try to avoid really dangerous vegisaurs like brachiosaurs. These gigantic plant eaters were so heavy they could squash a Dionychus with one step, and the pack was not likely to take on any ankylosaurs either. Even the strongest Dionychus kick would bounce off an ankylosaur's armor. Our hunches worked out. 
We didn't find any Dionychus bullets in the one spot we found that was full of Brachiosaurian Ankylosaur fossils. Okay, so if Dionychus avoided strong, dangerous vegisaurs, what was its favorite prey? We figured it should be the most common mid-sized plant eaters who didn't have armor. That's the way things usually work in nature. On the African plains today, hyenas are the most common predators, and they tend to eat zebra and wildebeest, the most common mid-sized plant eaters. So who was the most common mid-sized vegiosaur in Dionychus's habitat? The square-jawed, about 1,200-pound, Tenontosaurus. We found dozens and dozens of these guys scattered over 100 square miles, and that's where we found our Dionychus bullets, right smack with the Tenontosaurus. Were raptors ever cannibals? That's not a disgusting thought. Being a cannibal makes sense for most predators. Most wild meat eaters are always hungry and short of food. If one of your own kind dies, why not eat him or her? It's nature's recycling. So, did Dionychus ever eat its own kind? Yes. In one spot in Wyoming, we dug up a raptor that had been chewed to bits. All that was left were finger and tail bones. There were tooth bullets at the crime scene. Whose bullets? You guessed it. A raptor very much like Dionychus. Did Dionychus poop? Well, of course. Everybody's got to. Sometimes we see veggie sore droppings, but feces from meat-eating dinosaurs are rare. How come? Think about it. Dionychus was built like a big bird. What comes out of the rear end of an eagle? Eagle droppings, liquid feces. When eagle poop hits the ground, it splats. The fecal matter isn't firm and can't fossilize because it doesn't have enough bone minerals in it. But hyena poop and dog poop are full of bone bits and make excellent fossils. So why does an eagle poop have much bone in it? That's because when an eagle eats a rabbit, most of its bones don't come out the eagle's rear. They come out the eagle's mouth. Hawks and eagles and owls throw up the bones of their prey after the meat has been digested. If you find a tree where an owl is living, you'll find a pile of owl pellets on the ground. These are wads of bones and fur from mice and shrews eaten by the bird. Unlike wolves, Dionychus probably upchucked more bones than it pooped. So we look for dino pellets, fossilized wads of prey bones, and we find them. At one spot in 1999, my crew dug up a mass of broken ribs and backbones. And right with the bone wad was a dinosaur bullet, the ruthless tooth of a meat-eating predator. That tooth probably came from the same dinosaur who upchucked the bones. Was Dionychus a good parent? If you hatched out of a Dionychus egg 120 million years ago, would you find yourself alone? That's the way most lizards hatch. If you're a baby Komodo dragon lizard, your parents aren't around to help, so you must find your first meal by yourself. But eagle parents are around when their chicks hatch, and they feed the chicks at the nest until they're fully grown. So, what was dino predator family life like, lizard or eagle? We've got a lot of evidence from one special spot in Wyoming called Nail Quarry, a dinosaur predator we nicknamed Wyoming Raptor, a distant relative of Dionychus, left a wonderful crime scene full of dino bullets. We found a hundred teeth without roots in this spot and every one of them came from the same kind of predator and chewed up veggie sore bones were piled in with the bullets. Wyoming Raptor had spent months, maybe even years, dragging in prey bodies and eating them. Did these parent predators take care of the youngsters? And did the whole family eat together? How could we find out? Easy. If the chicks ate with their parents, then the chicks must have lost teeth in the same place where the adults lost theirs. We should find baby bullets mixed in with the adult bullets. And that's exactly what we did find. Right next to the adult Wyoming Raptor bullets, 
we found tiny baby bullets from predators who had just hatched. The adult teeth were 12 times bigger than the baby teeth, but they had the exact same shape under the microscope. All these Wyoming raptors, adults and chicks, were eating at this spot at the same time. This dinosaur family stayed together because it prayed together. Baby alligators chase small fry like bugs and crayfish because the gator mom doesn't hunt for her babies. But eagle hatchlings eat big prey, often bigger than themselves. That's because the mom and dad eagle bring food to their chicks. So how about our dinosaur predator? Did its chicks have to hunt for their own food? Nope. All the baby bullets we found were next to gigantic prey bones. These babies were gnawing on bodies that were 100,000 times as big as themselves. That's like you sitting at the dinner table and eating an elephant. The only way these babies could get such a big chunk of food was if their parents brought it in. And so we concluded that the adults were doing the hunting and fed their chicks just like eagles do. Wyoming Raptor lived a little earlier than Dionychus and wasn't quite so bird-like. We figure Dionychus was even more like an eagle in the way it raised its chicks. Dionychus and the other raptors are some of my favorite dinosaurs. They were fast and deadly, graceful and smart, and they managed to survive for 70 million years in a harsh environment. Sometimes when I'm eating lunch at a dinosaur quarry full of tooth bullets, I lean back on the cliff and look all around. I wish I had a time machine so I could visit the raptors when they were alive. And then I get another thought. We do have a time machine. It's our scientific imagination. If we know how to read the rocks and minerals, the fossil claws and teeth and bones, we can travel back to the time of the raptor pack.